श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षा परम ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम वी आर सी in the last two lectures what is the meaning of the practice of yoga raj yoga according to the principle of vedanta wherein importance is given to the conscious principle and not to the matter in the hatha yoga all the emphasis is only on the matter where they explain every yama niyama asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan samadhi with reference to the prakruti the matter as the basic point of attraction or working upon and here we have seen the words remain the same but the meaning is totally different because here our attention is on the conscious principle and not on <coughs> the matter as the primary factor and therefore in the 122nd verse we have seen what is dharana because dharana dhyan samadhi these are the three subtle uh, spiritual practices even according to the yoga shastra so in yoga shastra dharana is focusing attention on the principle of space हियर यत्र यत्र मनो याति ब्रह्मणास्तत्र दर्शनम मनसो धारणम चैव धारणा सा परामता सो इन केस ऑफ योगा व्हाट इज डन दैट द प्लेस इज फिक्स एज एन ऑब्जेक्ट एंड हियर इट इज नॉट द प्लेस व्हिच इज फिक्स वेयर एवर डजंट मैटर व्हिच प्लेस बट एवरीवेयर ब्रह्मण हा धारणम वी आर अगेन एंड अगेन doing the bhavana of whatever wherever whichever thing or being are seen they are none other than parman so in case of yoga we continue to be in the duality here we transcend the duality so manaso dharanam jaiva so we do this dharana now what how this dharana is done we go to the shiva temple and after having gone to the shiva temple we look at the shiva linga the stone and there our dharana is we are not looking at the stone we are looking at the lord see when we do the abhishek like you know the milk abhishek dugdha abhishek so when that abhishek is done that time we don't get that feeling that we are pouring the water and wasting it by throwing it on the stone this bhavana doesn't come see similarly when we are doing the puja of the vigrahas in our own house like you know you will see the pushti margis they don't take that vigraha of the laddu gopal bal gopal as a metal piece no see in one place i had gone pushti margi for old lady was there somewhere here in bombay so when i saw her i said mama let me have darshan of your laddu gopal she said sahaji don't talk he's sleeping come out i just close with great difficulty i have put him to sleep so no, don't disturb i cannot show you see for her it is not a statue for her it is a chaitanya vigra so when this practice is done then our mind is slowly getting converted as if from the mind into consciousness yatra yatra mano yati wherever the mind is going there it is the brahmanah dharanam then we are seen what is the dhyana in case of yoga dhyana is the object predominant uh, understanding so here brahmaivasmi ti sadvrutya so in dharana what happened 
Wherever the mind goes, there we do the practice of presence of divinity. Now, what about us? So, Brahmai Vasmiti Sadvritya Niralamma Tayasthiti. Now we have withdrawn from the objectivity and come to the subjectivity. And then who am I? Am I the body, the prana, the jiva, the papatma, punyatma, or aham brahma asmi? So now we do this practice. This is called as dhyana according to the Vedanta Shastra. Therefore, as I told you, the spiritual practice in Vedanta is analysis of our experiences and assertion that the one who is supporting all the experiences but not undergoing under the influence of any experience, that is our essential. In the 15th chapter, Bhagavan summarizes the whole thing in one line when he says, Mattaha parataram nanyat kinche rasti dharanjaya. Mattaha parataram, there is no cause of me. Anya, there is none like me. Kinche, there is no effect of me. There is but one absolute conscious reality. Then what about this world? There Bhagavan say, Mattaha Smriti Dhyanam Akohanancha. I alone support the waking dream and deep sleep. So they come and go. This assertion of our being, the absolute, is called as the Dhyana in case of this Vedanta Yoga Sadhana. See friends. Therefore here, we do not do meditation, but we live in meditation and then do the things. Now, this is one very important principle which I emphasize number of times. We do not do the waking. <coughs> we are in the waking and then do the things. Okay. Then we do not do the dreaming. Dreaming is there and then we start doing or not doing. Similarly, we don't do deep sleeping. We are in deep sleep and then we snore. Try to snore when you are awake. You cannot. If this is true, in the same manner, we have to live in meditation. Living in meditation means living in awareness. See? And how we don't live in awareness, one of the examples I'll give you. How we become mechanical in our every activity of life, everywhere. In the morning class, this thought came to me when I was talking there on Atma Upanishad. There the topic was about attachment. How the attachment develops, grows and becomes strong you can see from our small little activities of life. Like when we come, let us say satsanga. We want that particular seat where we have been sitting all these days. If somebody else occupies that seat, why is it in my seat? See, in the temples, when the satsanga is conducted, people are holding on to the pillar. Even the seat we are attached. When I was conducting this Vedanta courses, that was the first rule I told the students. You are not going to occupy the same seat every day. See? It happens. And we are not aware that we go and sit in the same place everywhere. We just can't imagine to change the seat. Therefore, when I sit here, without even opening my eyes, I can tell you, like a typewriter, quadri, you know, that uh, keyboard, I can tell you who is sitting there and who to delete. How much we get attached? Because we are not living in awareness. See, are we leading our life mechanically? That mechanical aspect must disappear. Then we start living 
in awareness. Living in this awareness is called a dhyana in Vedanta spiritual practice. So, Brahma Yivasmiti Sadvritya. Now we remain in this awareness that I cannot be the Panchakoshas, but the one who is supporting them. Now be attentive. If we practice this again and again, one day by the divine grace it happens. Then our involvement in the world, our attraction, everything slowly starts disappearing like the mango when it becomes ripe, without any effort it gets separated. And when the mango gets separated from the tree after ripening, the mango will never have the ego. I have sacrificed and given away the tree. See? Therefore, Brahmai Vaspiti Sadvritya Niralamba Tayasthiti. Niralamba. There is no alamban. There is no support. In case of the dhyana, according to Yoga Shastra, we have support. Sit quiet, okay. Then focus attention in your heart, dharana. Then hold on to somebody there. Om, Sri Krishna, Sri Ram, Hanumanji, Shiva. Hold on to somebody. And then go on chanting the name. Sri Krishna Sharanam Mama, Sri Krishna Sharanam Mama, Sri Krishna Sharanam Mama. And if somebody disturbs, don't you see I am doing meditation? Stop that. Sri Krishna Sharanam Mama. We are holding on to some alamban, some support. See? It is something like a child. The child doesn't want. To give up the doll, I want to sleep with my teddy bear, I cannot give up. But once the child sleeps, then you take away the teddy bear and the morning when he gets up, first thing, where is my teddy bear? In the same manner, we are holding on to some or the other alambanam. See? And here, Brahmai Vaspiti Sadvaritya Niralambataya. There is no support because this reality is the support of all the projections. Niralambataya sthitihi dhyana shabdena vikhyata paramananda dahini. And this is what is meant by the word dhyana and it is paramananda dahini. Paramananda is 100% independence. This is a very simple thumb rule. Sarvam paravasham dukkham. Sarvam atmavasham sukham. Any dependence. See, suppose you want a cup of tea in the morning and you have your servant there. And he gives. And one day the servant has forgotten or got somewhere and all that. See how agitated and disturbed you become. Why did you forget? Oh, I'm so sorry, I have forgotten. But why did you forget? I appointed you because I forget. <laughs> and you also forget. Then you have to appoint another one. So small little things. But it makes us so miserable. Therefore, <laughs> friends, again and again recognize this principle. That in this infinite reality, nothing is wanting, nothing is lacking. This total santosh contentment is Paramananda Dayati. Nirvikarataya vrutya brahma karataya punaha vrutti visparanam samyak samadhir jnana sanyakaha. Now, what is samadhi? First, nirvikarataya vrutya brahma karataya punaha. In this meditation according to our Vedanta, First, the mind is nirvikarataya. None of the worldly objects create any agitation in the mind. Nirvikarataya. First day. Thereafter, brahmakarataya. Now be attentive. If our mind is 
holding on to the form let us take a cow so the mind has taken the form of the cow this cow vritti the the cow thought and if the cow is removed then what remains there is nothing so we recognize everything through the thought in two ways something is and something is not so here the teacher says first nirvikarataya and when the modifications akara are removed but don't recognize those absence as an object of knowledge get this point waking experience is everything is present dream experience is everything is present deep sleep experience is everything is absent so waking and the dream experiences are making the presence of the objects as an object and in the deep sleep absence of the object is made as an object and in both the places we are only at the thought level see that is why patanjali defines nidra abhava pratyaya lambana vritti nidra when absence is an object of knowledge now is absence an object <coughs> absence is not an object but the absence of the object can become an object this is becoming too much <laughs> see friends everything is recognized in this waking and the dream as is 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 in deep sleep nothing is 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 so the nothingness which is not an object is made as, as an object because of earlier experience that everything is present see therefore nirvikarataya vrittya thereafter brahmakarataya punah then don't get into the absence of the object now focus or become aware that the one who illumined the presence of the objects as well as now the absence of the object is now beyond the presence and the absence of the object that is called as brahma karataya vritti see when you focus light on a wall the wall is seen if and whatever is painting that is seen if you don't focus nothing is seen nothing may be seen but the wall is there in the same manner the waking and dream seen as present deep sleep everything is absent but there is one principle when he is beyond the present and absent that is called as brahma karata apna then vritti vismaranam samyak and there after the last stage is even this that now everything is absent but i is still present be attentive even this being aware of the awareness that also disappears now we go yato vacho divartante aprapya manasasah no language can comprehend this and therefore vritti vismaranam now why vritti vismaranam be very attentive these are all technical things when we see an object or know an object what is the process involved this is a mic so the mind has taken the shape of the mic this is called as vritti vyapti second thing is this is a mic i know this 
So in this knowledge, the knower of the mic is born. This knower is called as the phalavyapti. Unless there is a knower, knowledge cannot happen. See? Otherwise, two chairs sitting next to each other, jagadal, fatu dharmi. Doesn't happen. Because there is no knower. So, this is an object. It is the vritti vyapti. The mind has taken the form of the object. Thereafter, the knower must be born. So, I know this is a mic. This is the phala vyapti. Now, in case of your own self, what will happen? Mind has taken the shape of the Brahman, which is infinite and without shape. What will happen? Mind has done the Vritti Vyapti. In that Vritti Vyapti, there is no possibility of Phala Vyapti, I cannot be born. So what is this experience? This is an experience where experiencer is not born. <coughs> this is what is called as Samadhi according to the Vedanta Shastra. See, friends. And therefore, this Samadhi can never break. In case of the Yoga Samadhi, there is a beginning, there is end. Because they are still holding on to the Prakriti. See? Samadhi is time oriented. Dhyana is object oriented. Dharana is the space or desh oriented. But in case of Vedanta Shastra, the meaning of the dharana, yatra yatra manoyati, path of devotion. Dhyana, Brahma Karataya Vritti. Path of inquiry. Samadhi, inquiry ends. See, friends. This is what is said here. Vritti Vismaranam. It is something like this. Do you uh, remember Mr. Gupta? No, I don't remember. This question and answer is valid. Do you remember you? Can we say this? We cannot say, do you remember you? I know myself. I don't remember. See? Therefore, vritti vismaranam. If it is in the purview of the memory, we are still at the thought level. And therefore, those who can forget, they are nearest to God. Because God doesn't remember. Oh, that is why Bhagwan ka itna kiya. <laughs> Standard, you know, phrase. Kiya, kya kiya. So, vritti vismaranam samek samadhi jnana sanjaka. This is the meaning of jnana samadhi. It is not a jad samadhi. There are two types of samadhi. Jad samadhi and jnana samadhi. In case of jad samadhi, the greatness is you can sit in one posture without disturbance for hours together, for days together, months together. See? And it is extremely appreciated because those who are appreciating, they are also at the level of the prakriti only. See? Like I told you in Varanasi when I went, two big pailwan came to meet me. Huge. The, if they go in that ring of the Pailwan, they will be appreciated. In the Vedanta class, when the Pailwan comes, Swamiji, whatsoever I can do, be my bodyguard. What does that mean? I can't talk to him Vedanta. See, those who are extremely influenced by the various Siddhis, various yogic practices, they are still in the KG kindergarten one. They are not rising above. And if you take the statistics, you will see higher education and the, uh, and the KG1, KG2. 
it will be like a pyramidal structure very few will be reaching on the top not the crowds therefore shurasya dhara nishita durate it is such a subtle path you won't get crowds here it is to the one by the one all alone without feeling lonely this is this path evam chakruti manandam tavat sadhu samabhyase vashyo yavat kshanan pumsah prayukta samab sambhavet svayam evam cha akrutrim anandam tavat sadhu samabhyase so till such time one is effortlessly abiding in this awareness like the other day one lady was telling me so i mean i have to tell you something i said tell you are giving me food how dare i don't listen to you family uh, my yoga teacher who comes and teaches me who was telling that i have changed maybe figure no no not figure but my attitude earlier i used to be very agitated very angry type even my servants are telling me bibi ji you have become very cool thank to swami ji because earlier they knew how much terrible she was then she said swami ji i ask you some time what should i do should i go to this ashram and do this seva and then go shala and do this seva you told me very clearly don't do all these things you have done sufficiently now the time is start undoing now what you have to undo to undo that focus your attention on the truth and how to do that like other boys and girls are doing you do this thing take one text listen it write it down do the dtp do whatever editing you can then send it to me i will bang you and you keep on doing and see what a change comes within a period of one year her total process of thinking change see all those you know the complete editorial team who are doing this work i am not doing anything my name is coming free karte to hum tum kadaiya mera naam ho raha hai to listen to one talk and write it down it takes 8 hours it is not so simple our anil mansukari dr anil mansukari is so busy yet he finds time and he has done two three chapters so i ask him i say hey you are so busy no no swami ji this is my food without this i can't survive see all that is required is our thinking process has to change so we are now thinking in terms of world now think in terms of how the god thinks about the world look at the world as the lord looks at the world the thinking process is changed therefore evam chakrutim anandam tava sadhu samabhyase till such time we come to remain effortlessly cheerful blissful without disturbances means when we are in samadhi 24/7 <laughs> till then keep yourself occupied in this process of thinking वशो यावत क्षणान पुंसा प्रयुक्ता संभव स्वयं एंड वेन यू हैव कम टू दिस पॉइंट दैट युअर माइंड इज नाउ अवेलेबल टू यू एट एनी मोमेंट फॉर एनी जॉब फॉर एनी लेंथ ऑफ टाइम फ्रीली दैट फ्रीडम इज कॉल्ड एज द अल्टीमेट समाधि सी वी आर ऑल इन समाधि as regards example driving is concerned any time we get up from the sleep and sit there do we have to repeat anything think no it just happens so as regards driving is concerned we are in samadhi in the same manner when we are able to be effortlessly gliding in our own being with a fraction of moment यत्र यत्र मनो याती तत्र तत्र समाधया 
such a person lives in meditation 24/7. And when such a person lives in meditation, this is what is described in Bhagavad Gita in three places. Second chapter, Prajahati yada kaman sarvan parthamanogatan atman nevatmana tushtaha stita prajnasta dochate. Twelfth chapter, Dukkeshu anudvignamanaha sukeshu vigadaspruhaha aneketa stiramatihi tulya ninda stutir moni santushto yena kena chit yasmano dvijate lokaha lokano dvijate jayaha adveshta sarvabhutana maitra karuna evacha all these things start happening. See, then we are living in meditation. And the last in 14th chapter. Prakasham cha pravrittim cha mohame vacha pandava na dveshti sam pravrittani na nivruttani kaangshati. Whether there is an upsurge of sattva guna or rajo guna or tamo guna. They do not create any agitations or any great achievement because he has already transcended the three gunas. These three places Bhagavan Sri Krishna speaks about living in meditation. Therefore, evam cha akritim anandam tavat sadhu samabhesed vasho yavat kshanan umsaha prayukta Swayam, when we are able to get involved and withdraw in a fraction of a second. See? Ours is getting involved, starting trouble. Uthona school jana Starting trouble. See? And then doesn't stop. Now it is 11 o'clock. Go to bed. No, no, what movie is going on? Let me finish that. So we are such victims. Neither we can start at free will, nor we can stop at free will. That freedom to get involved and freedom to withdraw from the world is called as living in meditation. In the fifth chapter, Arjuna asks this question. Sometimes you are glorifying the karma yoga, sometimes you are glorifying the withdrawal karma sannyasa. What is the best between the two? Tell me. Bhagavan says, Sanyasa karma yoga sya nishriyasa karo ubhau. Both are required. Tayostu karma sanyasat karma yoga vishishate. Unless you are doing something, you cannot withdraw. See? Therefore, life is a perfect balance between getting involved and getting withdrawn. Living with this wisdom and understanding is called as living in Samadhi according to Jnana Samadhi Vedanta. Tataha sadhana nirmuktaha siddho bhavati yogirat tat sarupam cha na chaikasya vishayo manasogiram. Tataha and when this is being practiced and one attains this freedom. Bhagavan Shakaracharya yoga ratova bhoga ratova. Sangarato va sanga vihina. Yes, a Brahmani Ramati chitam, same topic. Nandati nandati anandati eva. He is living in joy. Nay, he is bliss himself. Tataha thereafter, sadhana nirmuktaha, yogirat siddho bhavati. Then for him, there is no more practice. Like, once we learn swimming, then we don't have to again learn. Even if you want, you cannot forget. In the same manner, abidance in the self has to happen only once. And once thereafter, Siddho Bhavati, now he has attained perfection and now he is only a mobile temple of God. Now through him, the truth alone is expressing. And what will be the expression of the truth? What is the expression of electricity through the bulb? Only light. And thereafter, it doesn't matter whether disco or discourse. 
it makes no difference both to the light or to the electricity. Electricity will not say, no, in discourses you go, disco don't go. See? The relativity is transcended fully. Tat swarupam nacha ekasya vishayo manasogiram. What is this like? Cannot be spoken of by words or cannot be understood by us. See, Samartha Ramdas Swami, Guru of Shivaji Maharaj, used to say, Shahanat Zane Shahanayaki Lakshane. Wise alone know the ways of the wise. Otherwise, can never know. See, friends. Therefore, let us not try to evaluate the people, the world. I think, uh, who asked me somewhere, Maranasya Samir, Swamiji, what is your opinion about that Mahatma? Do you think he is realized? I said, maybe 78, 79 percent. Don't go into that. We are, are you going to evaluate the quality of the mirage waters? <laughs> See? Once you are recognized, it is mirage water. Will you ever waste your time in evaluation? Once you know it was never a snake, it was a rope. No, that is true. But which was neither it was a cobra or cobri. <laughs> we are not going to waste your time on that. Friends, what is the gender of the shadow of the man? Masculine gender? And what is the shadow of the woman? Feminine gender. Are Maharaj, if it is there, then the problem of gender will come. See? No, sit separately. The masculine shadow is this side. So the light should be put in such a manner that the shadow should go this way, should not come this way. When we have recognized this is all an illusion and drama, we can never get involved in this. Now, we have to attain this Samadhi, what a lovely it is. But, see, we are eating butter all the time. So for everything, this is not only but, but butter butest. This but butter butest is called as the obstacles. And why the obstacles? Only because we have not recognized the value of this. This is the only thing. See one example I gave a number of times. Has anybody ever said, earning money is difficult, therefore I am not going to earn money. Okay? We know the value of money and therefore we will find out ways and means above the table, below the table. But earn the money. In the same manner, when we recognize the value and importance of this, we will have no difficulties. You know the definition of difficulty? When our attention is taken away from the goal, Thereafter, whatever is seen is called as the difficulty. If your attention is on the goal, there is no difficulty in life. See? Many times, you know, when we go for the airport or anywhere, I remember in uh, Howrah it happened. Then Howrah Bridge used to be always jam packed. And Sometimes you go uh, three hours before the train, yet you will be caught up there. Sometimes you go three hours and you reach there in ten minutes and then sit there, keep caught up. So I have suffered a lot there. Once when I went, this side of the Howrah Beach and that side is the station. Completely jam. Now to whom will I complain? I had to catch the train. Subsequent programs are there. So I got down, took my suitcase, and then their coolies are always there. We didn't know the basket in which Bhagavan Krishna was carried by Vasudevji and came the basket. 
So in their basket, you put your bag and all that, and the coolies are expert. They will be going, oh, and you hold on to his pallu and run around, <laughs> or else he will disappear. <laughs> See? You find out the ways and means and run and catch your train. Because you know the value of it, difficulties are always there. See? So here, what are the difficulties, the obstacles that a seeker has to go through in the practice of Samadhi? Samadho kriyamane tu vigna ayanti vaivalad anusandhana rahityam anasyam bhogalalasam lalas tamascha vikshepo rasasvadascha shunyata evam yad vignava hulyam tyajyam brahma vidashanaihi Samadhau kriyamane tu when one starts practicing this samadhi what we have learned then vigna ayanti vai balan all the obstacles will come to you and these obstacles, if you want to summarize them in one word, they are called as Mr. Murphy. You know the Murphy's law? You don't know? You have wasted your life. <laughs> Murphy's law is, if something can go wrong, it will. When you are going in this lane of car, the other lane moves faster. It's a rule. When you are... Uh, like you know, the other day happened in my house. The gas was you know, not coming properly for making the tea. And I don't know when it will be folded. So that man will come. By the time the man came, gas also came. Thick to hai. So why this happened? I said, Murphy. <laughs> Many times, you know, you take your uh, instrument or machine to the mechanic to show him. They go chal nahi raha. And he starts to talk. And you feel so dumb. Understand? Murphy is functional. See? Like we yesterday, we went to the doctor. Our human took me. He told me, Swamiji, get your CT scan and this thing. I did everything. And we went there. And after going there, he checked everything. The doctor, nothing wrong. <laughs> He said, it is just little allergy. And he gave me some allergy pills and all that. And in one dose, I am feeling better. And for more than two months, I have been suffering. <coughs> Today, I am not coughing much, isn't it? <laughs> See? Why this happens? Murphy. So, this all the obstacles in life, they are called as Vigna Ha, Vigna Aya Anti Vai Balan. Now, which are those obstacles first? Anusandhana Rahitya. One. There is no continuity in our spiritual practice. See? We imagine spiritual practice is a part-time profession. It is a full-time occupation. Walking, sitting, talking, getting involved, getting withdrawn. Every expression of life is a spiritual practice. Now, what is that spiritual practice? I will give you one simple technique. One day, somewhere, uh, in Coimbatore, I said, I will give you one simple technique. After my lecture was over, one lady came, Swamiji, don't say that sentence. What? You say simple, it is very difficult. See? The simple technique is, Learn from every experience of your life. When we learn from every experience of our life, we do not allow that experience to make an impression on our mind. Because you have learned. And if you don't learn, then there will be, there will be an impression of like or dislike. And when the likes and dislikes are precipitated on our mind as a result of our interaction with the world, a samsari is born. See? How simple it is. Therefore, anusandhana rahitya, there is no continuity, we get spiritual influenza. See? 
who told me the other day, Swamiji, when you come here for lectures, you know, you charge us and our battery continues for uh, next three, four months. But again, then we require you, you please come again and again, don't come once in a while. How long are we going to hold on to? See? Like one old short man was standing in the bus and one huge hefty fellow came and stood next to him. So this old man asked, Beta, when will you learn standing on your own feet? I am standing on my own feet. No, you are standing on my feet. <laughs> How long are we going to be dependent on outside? Anusandhana Rahitya. We have to be continuously involved in and through every experience. Then, uh, Rahityam Alasyam. Very close friend. Alasya. Alasya is having no charm in life. That is Alasya. Let's go for a walk. See, after going, we'll come back here. Alasya. <laughs> Anything that is to be done, the laziness pulls us back. See, till this day, I have never gone for a walk. Yesterday, doctor told me, Swamiji, you must be doing yoga. I said, no. You must be doing pranayam, I said, no. You have to do it. And the reason why I don't do it is only RSC. What is this in the simple thing? I'm one pumping the air. And my idea is when you do this thing, I is born. So I am doing pranayam. Can we do the pranayam without the formation of I? No. So why create the I? That is the problem. Then what is to be done? Don't do it. <laughs> this is how I justify my laziness. Alasya. Then Bhogal Alasam. Bhogal Alasam is what? We start enjoying our meditation. <coughs> meditation is not a bhoga. Enjoying. And then they say, Kalka meditation jamata. I ni jamata. Is it ice cream or what? Sometimes java, sometimes ni java. It is not a bhoga. In the meditation practice, the I disappears. As I told you, there is no phalavyapti. If phalavyapti happens, you are still at the level of the mind. And then there will be different degrees of meditation. See? First degree meditation, I was able to uh, come for the meditation. Mm -hmm. Second degree meditation, I saw others and noted what are the things that they have got, have to buy. Mm -hmm. The third degree meditation, I also wanted to sit like them in Padmasana. But then I got such a pull in my knee that I now cannot sit at all. <laughs> it's not meditation. Here, the I must disappear. Now take one very good example. Can you be attentive? Can you imitate the sleeping style of others? Some people when they sleep, they will be sleeping in Bhujangasan. Some people <laughs> sleep in Shavasan. Some people sleep on one side, left side. Some sleep on right side. Some people will be having a pillow or something, you know, a, below their leg. So many different. So when you look at, Acha, ye aisa sota, maybe aisa so many. You cannot. Why you cannot imitate sleeping postures of others? Because you are not there. There is no mimicry in deep sleep. See? Exactly the same way. On the spiritual path, there is no mimicry. There is no repetition of meditation. Because it is one, it's not many. 
वर्ड्स कैन बी रिपीटेड साइलेंस इज नॉट रिपीटेड वेकिंग ड्रीम डीप स्वीप समाधि कैन बी रिपीटेड द कॉमन डिनोमिनेटर सपोर्टिंग ऑल ऑफ देम इज कंटिन्यूस यू कैन रिपीट इट देर फोर भोग लालसम इट इज नॉट ए भोग समाइम द मेडिटेशन इज गुड समाइम द मेडिटेशन इज बैड दिस इज नॉट ट्रू अदरवाइज will be getting lost only in this there is no bhog in meditation third is layaha this is a common problem we sit exclamation after 3 seconds question mark <laughs> after another 3 seconds underline khar 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 the mind is gone back to the prakriti and therefore the deep sleep begins therefore you know these two things if you observe become aware about it when you are sitting for your meditation what happens you know by proper awareness your breathing becomes extremely slow and shallow so it is something like you know your blood pressure you have to maintain the blood pressure normal blood pressure in the same manner manner normal healthy breathing is when it is extremely slow and extremely shallow if the breathing becomes deep instead of shallow you are entering sleep in sleep we breathe deep that is why when the people uh, snore they don't snore fast there is no so they are not in the hurry jana kaha rehna hai yahan so whenever the breathing becomes deep you are entering sleep when the breathing becomes fast then you are getting identified with the body when we run and after that you are tired you breathe uh, why because identified with the body body has done a lot of exercise more oxygen is required the speed has to increase but when you are withdrawn from the body identification your basal metabolic rate falls down oxygen requirement is minimum as a result naturally your breathing becomes extremely slow see so laya is not taking care of this and therefore when you sit for meditation in no time one goes to sleep laya then tamaha <coughs> tamaha is ending in absolute darkness i don't know what to do now how long to sit coming to a kalde sack a dark point what next yes i am sitting and japa also had done but there is no child ram 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 how do i do i don't know i don't know that kind of blankness what next is tamaha then vikshepaha vikshepa is agitated small little things are enough to agitate us and the source of agitation is either external or internal external source of agitation is the sound because sound is the subtlest of all the objects in the world because it is the quality of the space space is subtlest so the quality of the space is sound 
therefore when you close all your faculties you can't close your ears like the hippopotamus and then anything happening anywhere we hear and the more you want to say i am not going to hear anything that very moment something like kon aaya so external sounds is one cause of vikshepa second is internal sankalpa therefore those who are attending the meditation they know never take any sankalpa what you will do after meditation because in meditation this is the last moment of my life no sankalpa so is meditation going to kill us yes now i is going to disappear If you take any sankalpa, small little thing, after uh, you know meditation is over, I have to prepare upma for Swamiji. One sankalpa. Whole meditation will be cutting on you. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> so vikshepa and rasasvada. Rasasvada is enjoying meditation. Come on, let's enjoy meditation. And what is the enjoyment of meditation? Dynamic meditation. That is all. Don't get carried away by all those gimmicks. And ultimately, shunyata. Shunyata is coming to a blind end, and the eyes are blank. See? It's not a blank eyes, full of life, without Mr. I peeping out of those eyes. The shunyata is like the dead eyes, you know. When somebody is dead, his eyes are shunyata. That is the kind. So shunyata, these are the various kinds of obstacles which come across when we practice. meditation as our spiritual practice now the teacher says bhava vrittya hi bhavatvam shunya vrittya hi shunyata purna vrittya hi purnatvam tatha purnatvam abhyase now here in this practice of meditation this is a tham rule given bhava vrittya hi bhavatvam if the thought is with reference to something present so from that something present remove the something what remains is only the presence bhava vrutti so we take bhagwan sri krishna standing in front close your eyes he is in my heart and after some time what we are seeing outside we start seeing it inside only for a short period till that image of the external object is not erased from the mind because it is just an image that image gets erased from the mind and then we again suffer oh where krishna has gone are baba that is not the topic the topic is the external object which you are seen by seen through the eyes but in the mind as an image when you close your eyes you saw the same image but hazy not as clear as you are seen with your open eyes so what you saw inside were only an image because it is an image it will slowly disappear in time and when the image disappeared then focus attention on that which was illuminating the external object that which was illuminating the presence of the image in the mind with the closed eyes and when the image has disappeared we continue to be this is bhava vrittya hi bhavatvam first we take object 
presence or the existence of object then existence of the image of the object and when image disappears has the existence disappeared see take another example <coughs> two objects mic and book why these are two objects because in between there is neither mic nor book when the book and the mic is not there but in that absence of the book and mic are you not there who has eliminated the absence of the two has to be present bhava vrittyahi bhavatvam Now, extend this example. Waking is illumined; it comes and goes along with the waker. Dreaming is illumined; it comes and goes along with the dreamer and his experiences. Deep sleep is illumined; that also comes and goes. Samadhi also comes and goes. But there is one continuous akhanda vritti, bhavatpika. So. भाव वृत्या ही भावत शून्य वृत्या ही शून्यता इज ऑन द एबसेंस अर्लियर देर वॉज एन ऑब्जेक्ट श्री राम नाउ देर इज नो ऑब्जेक्ट साइलेंस एबसेंस ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट एंड वेन वी दस practice focusing on the absence of the object we end up into absence asat brahmeeti chet veda asat eva bhavati he who recognizes the parmatma as absence he himself is denying his presence therefore shunya vritya hi shunyata purna vritya hi purnatvam <coughs> now the thought is the same whether you apply that thought for the existence or the absence or the infinite it is the same see whether you put efforts for controlling the people or you put efforts for controlling your sense organs or you put efforts for controlling your mind and intellect efforts are the same whether you put efforts in earning the money or you put efforts in controlling your life effort is the same earning money is not a simple <coughs> job it requires lot of efforts so where do you put your efforts so here same thing with the thought bhava vrittya hi bhavatvam shunya vrittya hi shunyata पूर्ण वृत्या ही पूर्णत्व नाउ वी हैव दिस थर्ड ऑप्शन एंड द थर्ड ऑप्शन इज दिस अहम ब्रह्मास्मी ब्रह्म इज इन्फिनेट सी एंड वेन वी प्रैक्टिस दिस अहम ब्रह्मास्मी दैट वेयर सेंस ऑफ अदरनेस इज एबसेंट बट that which is ever present is brahma in deep sleep sense of otherness is absent but the deep sleep is not brahma that where the sense of otherness is absent but that is ever present this is infinite purnamadaha purnamidam purnat purnamudachyati this is that so we do this bhava vritti aham brahmasmi <coughs> and aham brahmasmi is not the japa to be done hari ram hari ram 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 hari ram brahmasmi aham brahmasmi aham brahmasmi aham brahmasmi aham brahmasmi no <coughs> like i don't do the japa that i am a man i am a man i am not a woman i am a man i am not a woman baba i am a man 
But all my conduct in the life is with this foundation that I am a man. Suppose I had to talk in Hindi. How I will say, Mai ja raha hu. Will I say, Mai ja rahi hu, unless I am a Gujarati of Bombay who has got these uh, ghati ladies as their servants. Because they know only that much of Hindi, Marathi. So that lady says, Yete, Yete Sedji. So Sedji has learned. So Sedji also says, Swami Ji, Tumi Yete kya? <laughs> See? The gender associated with the verb tells what you have taken yourself to be. Main ja raha hu, that means a man is talking. Main ja rahi hu, that means a woman is talking. But when you go to some places, where I heard, uh, Gujarat also, as well as in South India also, when they use the he and she, they themselves know. See, even in the other countries, the other day, one lady from Argentina, she came. And she said, Swamiji, uh, when my father was there, you know, uh, she is to help me in learning this thing. <laughs> but now he has gone. But now, of course, my mother is now 99, but he is very strong. <laughs> See, he and she is gender associated with the identification. In the same manner, <laughs> if I recognize myself to be infinite, what are the symptoms of being infinite? Number one, no desire. You cannot add anything. You cannot subtract anything. There is no loss, there is no gain. See? There is no sense of otherness. There is no concept of in and out. So, Purnam Rityahi Purnatvam Tatha, therefore, Purnam Abhyaset. So practice this as your meditation according to Vedanta. Now after having said this thing, now the teacher takes up the last but one probably concluding topic of this beautiful text. Yehi vrittim jahat enam brahma khyam pavani param vruthai vate tu jivanti pashubhishcha samanara. Those who are being indifferent to this Aham Brahmasmi practice, which is Pavanim Param, which is the ultimate purification. Impurity is presence of the sense of otherness. Impurity is the load of desires. Impurity is carrying the load of the past. Impurity is Worrying about the future, impurity is trying to improve somebody. Impurity is trying to make others happy. These are all impurities. So, pamarim param. See? Therefore, yeti vrittim jahate nam brahmakyam pamarim param. Those who remain indifferent to this most purifying principle of our being, Vrutha eva tute jivanti. Their life is in vain. See, the only purpose that we are human beings is to be a counter through which the divinity expresses in full glory. That is the only purpose. Like the only purpose of the eyes is to see the colors and forms. The only purpose of the ears is to hear the sounds. In the same manner, the only purpose of our life is we become an instrument to carry on His will. We can carry on His will if we don't have wills in our hands. See, friends, if we are indulgent in this world, if we want something from this world, we will never become 
the instrument through which his will is manifested. And when we agree with the divine will, then there is no failure, there is no success. See? This technique is understood by our government. <laughs> Any problem, let us make a committee. And what is the committee? Committee is a group of people who are not committed to anything. <laughs> and they come together and come to a conclusion that nothing can be committed for. So what for they come together? Come eat. <laughs> That's it. There's no other purpose. And every committee meeting ends with one conclusion. When is the next meeting? <laughs> and when a committee takes a decision, nobody is responsible. This is the decision of the, you know, parliament. Which is parliament? What are you? He prays. Therefore, Krutha eva tu te jivanti pashubhishya samadaraha yehi vrutim vijananti yeh jnyatva vardhayanti vi te vai sat purusha dhanya vandyati bhonatraye But those who are practicing this in their life, they alone have really lived the dignified existence of being born as a human being. Just imagine. <coughs> You happen to go and meet the mother of Swami Vivekananda. Imagine. And what will you talk to her? Ma, you are great because your son has given such a great joy, knowledge, confidence, inspiration to the people, millions of them, when this will be heard from an unknown person by that mother, she will discover fulfillment of her being a mother. See? And those who cannot lead a life which will make their people proud of their presence, see? Are they ever living? From whatever standpoint you take, from emotional standpoint, from the perfection standpoint, from the achievement standpoint, from the divine will standpoint, it is the same. We are here only to attain that perfection so that the Lord can choose us to express through us. So all our spiritual practice is this. Uddhare dātmanātmanam nātmanam avasādhaye ātmaiva ātmano bandhu ātmaiva rikurātmana And this can happen only if, this is said here, yehi vrtim vijānanti yej jñātva vardhayante Two things. Those who know this and those who practice to become perfect in this. Tevai sat purusha dhanya they are the real great masters. They have really fulfilled their mission in this world. And when they are they are worthy of worship. And they are worshipped in all the three worlds. See? Therefore, friends, Vidwan Sarvatra Puja, the wise ones are worshipped everywhere in the whole world. Tomorrow we will try to conclude this beautiful text of Arokshana Purna. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnaat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Yonamaha Hari Om